All right, we are talking about theorems. If you haven't looked at the front, IVT, MVT, EVT, I'd go back and do that. We've got this table. We are differentiable. We're trying to explain why there must be a value. We decided that this is an IVT question. Here's how we're going to set this up. So we want to start off, if we're thinking this is IVT, we want to start off by thinking what thing has to be true in order for IVT to work. Continuous. So we're going to start off with that condition. So since F of X is continuous, we're going to start off with that. And then we also want to know those points that are important. So in this case, so since, it's F, since F is continuous and we decided to talk about these two points because 7 falls in between this 6 and that 9. So we're going to just state those ordered pairs. So since F is continuous and F of 1 is 6 and F of 2 is 9. Basically, we said everything we need to know. If we know those two things, that I'm continuous and I have those endpoints, it's going to work. So we state that right off the bat so we don't forget it. Then we're going to talk about the theorem. So the next sentence is like, hey, what theorem is it and what's got to be true? So IVT guarantees IVT guarantees. And then basically we're just going to repeat whatever they told me. IVT guarantees F of R is going to be equal to 7 on the interval from 1 to 4. So basically I just repeated that part right there. So what was the condition? What is telling us that this is true? IVT is going to make that true on that interval. And then we just have to say why. How do we know that because there's one last thing I need here for IVT. F of 1 is less than 7 is less than F of 2. Basically just saying the number we're looking for falls in between those two endpoints. And IVT guarantees that we have to hit every number in between those endpoints. Yes, sir. They do not. Spelling does not matter. Here were the five things. When we did this originally, we really emphasized five things. Here they are. Continuous endpoints, IVT, the interval, and that I'm in between the end, the endpoints. Those are the five. But I think if you just set it up correctly, you're not going to miss one. Questions on the first one? Let's go to the next. Explain why there must. So again, you see that word must, you're thinking theorems. It's got to be one of them. For, explain why there must be a value C from 1 to 4 such that F prime of C is equal to negative 6. Talk with your neighbor. Come up with a game plan and what you should do. What, what theorem do you think we need here if we are talking about F prime of C is equal to negative 6? It is going to be an MVT question. Some of you on the test wanted to use IVT on the mock exam. And that would be okay if... F prime would have fallen in between. Based off of these derivatives right now, does it guarantee that my slope's ever going to be negative 6? Because negative 6 doesn't fall in between that. So we can't use IVT here. Instead, we are going to use mean value theorem. And we, we don't really care about F prime for this. It doesn't matter. Okay? We're going to talk about mean value theorem. The first thing we want to do in order for mean value theorem to work, we need to know what the average rate of change is. So I need to pick because the average rate of change is going to be equal to the derivative. What numbers on that chart up there are going to help me find the average rate of change to be negative 6? 3 and 4. These are the two numbers I need. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is identify those ordered pairs. And then we are going to find the average rate of change. You need to write that out on your paper. So I'm going to do that. I'm taking y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So I get negative 6 all over 1. Cool. We wanted average rate of change to be negative 6. We got that. So it's a true statement. Now we just need to explain it. Everybody with me so far? All right. So let's start off by saying what has to be true. What was the condition that has to be true in order for mean value theorem to work? Since F is differentiable. And I'm just going to go ahead and say the interval here since F is differentiable on the interval. And I'm going to say the whole interval. 
Okay, you could say just from three to four. I'm just going to state the whole thing because if one to four works, so does three to four. Since f is differentiable on that, then we're going to that that is what has to be true. And then we could say m v t guarantees. f prime of c equals negative 6. We just basically stated what they stated. Hey, we've got to get negative 6. And then we're going to say because. What is our because? What is true that make, makes us know that f prime has to be equal to negative 6? Because the average rate of change from, and I'm going to go ahead and state the interval here just because, you know, I don't think they would count you wrong, but I wouldn't risk it, right? This is a test to earn college credit. Writing down from the interval is not going to slow you down, okay? The average rate change from three to four is negative six. Boom. That is my full thing. We stated our condition. We stated what has to be true, and then we stated why. Those are the three steps we need to state each time. Everybody with me on B? So let's talk about C. Obviously, if we did IVT and MVT, there's a pretty good chance the next one's going to be EVT. Read it. Talk with your neighbor. See if you can come up with a plan. All right. We read this. Explain why there must be a value D. And then they give us this weird thing. Where D is between 1 and 4 such that F of D, the Y value, is greater than or equal to all of the other Y values. If one Y value, F at some X value, is greater than or equal to Every other y value, what is that a weird way of saying? That is an absolute max. That's what it's asking. Again, your answer, it, it's prob your theorem is probably going to be IVT or MVT. Unless you see that absolute max or absolute min, it's IVT or MVT. This one, hey, it's EVT. Okay, it's extreme value theorem. It's the easiest one to prove. All right, we're going to start off with the conditions. You need two conditions for EVT to work. Since. F is continuous. We got to start with that one. And then the second one's a little bit weirder, but what's the other thing we need? Closed on the closed interval. And you can say on the closed interval. I'm just going to write on the closed interval. I'm using brackets. So that means the closed. Or you could have just written that interval just like that. On the interval from 1 to 4. That's closed, meaning it includes the endpoints. So since F is continuous on that interval, then we're going to state... What has to be true? EVT guarantees there is an absolute max. And to be honest on this one, we're done. There's not anything else we have to state. Okay, on our mock exam, we had to do a little bit more because it didn't tell us that it was continuous. So if you think back to that question, we had to prove continuity. We had to show the limit from the left, the limit from the right, and the value are equal. But here, it told me it was continuous, and it's closed, done. It's EVT. It's got to have maxes and mins. Make sense on how we justify each one. State what the condition that has to be true. State what is true, and then prove why by saying the thing that we need. Yes, ma'am. Uh, it's closed because we're talking when it's less than or equal to. Since it's equal to, if it was just less than one and, and greater than four, whatever, that wouldn't be closed. But since it's equal to, that implies closed. Everybody good? All right, let's try some multiple choice. So on the next page, you got questions two, three, and four. They are multiple choice questions that rely on IVT, MVT, and EVT. Talk with your neighbor, see if you can do them. They're tough. Try them anyways. Let's get us going. Here we go. You've got a function f of x, the application of mean value theorem. On the interval from 0 to 2 guarantees the existence of C, where the derivative, F prime of C, what is going to be equal to the derivative? Average rate of change. Do you need to find a derivative to find average rate of change? No. Average rate of change is just the slope of your function. That's all it is. You don't got to take a derivative here. All you need to do is find F of 0 and find F of 2. So you take 0, you plug it in, you get 1. You take 2, you plug it in, you get 7. Then we find the slope. 7 minus 1 over 2 minus 0. It gets me 6 over 2. It's 3. The answer is B.
Average rate of change just means slope. You do not have to take a derivative to find average rate of change. Questions there on two. Number three, F is continuous from two to five, and they tell me some points. Which of the following additional conditions guarantees there's a number such that F prime of C is equal to zero? When in doubt, graph it out. So one, two, one, two, three, 17. And then three, four, five, 17. So F prime of C equals zero. If we're talking about the derivative, what theorem are we describing here? MVT. You see the word guarantees? Again, you're thinking that's a theorem. Is the average rate of change zero? Yeah, the average rate of change is zero. So MVT should work here. What condition has to be true for MVT to work? It has to be differentiable. It doesn't say that up here. It says it's continuous, but without it being differentiable, it might not be true, okay? Because if you had a graph in between that was like that, there's no place on that graph where the slope is zero because right here the slope is undefined because it's a corner point, okay? But that would be something, if it said differentiable, then it would be true because if it's differentiable, you got to have a nice smooth line. So yeah, the slope is zero somewhere. Questions on three. Yes, sir. Um, I'm confused why you couldn't use the easy feature to help justify it. It's like you've got continuous, you've got slope change, and then you've got f prime of c is equal to zero. So yeah, but uh, EVT doesn't talk about maxes and mins, or it doesn't talk about slopes. I know what you're saying there, and I don't disagree with that concept. Again, I'm going to say like 90% of the time it's either IVT or MVT. So unless it specifically asks for a maximum or minimum, it's not an EVT question. I know that you're thinking, hey, the slope is zero. That happens at maxes and mins. I'm good with that. That's, you're not incorrect. It's easier to use MVT. Yeah, because the, the break to that as I'm thinking my way through it, like if I had that, it's got an absolute max, but the slope isn't zero. You know what I mean? Because we're talking about slopes and the slope could be undefined as well. So right, right thought process there, but it's not going to work perfectly. All right, last one. The table gives values of F. Okay, so when in doubt, I'm going to graph it out. So I got 0, 3. I got 2, 4. I got 4, 9. I got 8, 13. Then the weird thing about this problem, the thing that you're going to dislike, is that H of X is equal to F of 2X. Which of the following statements has to be true? Does H have to be increasing from 2 to 4? Based off the picture, does it look like it's increasing? But don't let that be, don't let that fool you, okay? Because all those are our points. All we know is that. Could the graph be doing this? Wee. Maybe the graph is doing this. Wee. Is it increasing that whole time? No. It could be increasing, but we don't know for sure. When you just have dots, it's probably not going to be true unless they tell you specifically. So that one does not have to be true. Must be true. The second one says 0 to 4, H of C equals 12. So we're trying to get a value. Which theorem are we talking about here? IVT. So I need to find H of 0. How do I find H of 0? From this guy right here. So it's really F of 2 times 0. 2 times 0 is 0. F of 0 is 3. Cool. We also need to know H at 4. If I do H of 4, that's F of 2 times 4. F of 8. F of 8 is 13. If I've got an endpoint of 3 and 13, am I going to get 12? Yeah, yeah that's guaranteed. That, that's going to happen. IVT, it's continuous. In fact, it's differential. So 2 is true. Is there some place where the slope is 3? What theorem are we talking about if we want to talk about slopes? MVT. So I need to know the endpoints on this guy, 0 and 2. Well, I know what H of 0 is. That's still going to be true. H of 0 is F of 2 times 0, which is still 3. But then I also want to know H at 2, because that's my other value. So if I'm doing H of 2, that's F of 2 times 2, or F of 4. F of 4 is 9. And what would I need to do with those endpoints now that I have them? y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. I get 6 over 2, which gets me 3. Yep, the average rate of change is 3, so it's guaranteed that the function is going to have a derivative of 3 at the same time. Questions on those?
Here we go. Just before we leave here, let's look at our answers, see if you're in agreement on the first one. Is there a time when C prime is equal to 2? If I want a derivative, what theorem am I talking about? MVT. We have to say it's differentiable on that interval. We found the average rate of change, so we found the slope. You could have picked different numbers than me. I picked these two because the slope of those two got me two, so that's what I chose. Since uh, it guarantees that the derivative is going to be two because the average rate of change on that interval is two. The second one, we want to know a value. I'm trying to be equal to 10, so that is an IVT question. Since I'm continuous, I state the endpoints. IVT is going to guarantee that I'm equal to 10. Why? Because the, what, the C of 0 is less than 10 is less than C of 6. And then the last one, the multiple choice, the answer was B. The only thing that wasn't guaranteed was a slope of 0.